Right, excuse the uh, surroundings, I'm doing this at home, uh, just a quick job for a mate. Um, I thought I'd make a quick video, show people how it's done, what tools are involved um, uh, for the people on the Autel groups, always asking questions and things like that. This might help you out. Right, so cloning a BMW uh, EC onto another one is pretty much straightforward. I'm not going to go into that, different tools and stuff. Um, this video is about when you have a water damaged DCU that you can't read or clone. It's uh, very common on BMWs. This is an MSD80. Um, found in lots of petrol BMWs, so you need to write the ISN number of the new unit into the CAS module. You cannot clone that into that. So you get that information, which is from another vehicle, you change the information in here, so it accepts that, and away you go. Hopefully that makes sense to somebody, um, and I'll show you what's involved. As you can see, this is a very damaged ECU. Obviously they sit that way up in the car. All the water damage always happens at the bottom. Um, yeah, right. On we go. Uh, for customers, this is what's involved. For those wanting to know how to do it, I'll show you some of the equipment involved. This is, I'm not by any means going to use the best equipment. I'm just going to use my Autel, a laptop, a programmer, breakout box, a um, power supply. Um, there is better and more dedicated equipment, but that's what I had in the van. This is, like I say, I'm at home. This is a favour for a mate. Um, so there you go. Normally I wouldn't show this sort of thing because it, you know, it's a valuable service. Saves customers lots of money. Um, I invest a lot of money and time into figuring out how to do these things. Uh, I charge a, what I think is a fair price, so I have to make money, you know. Got to live, got bills to pay. Um, and it's security related and I rarely show security related stuff. But um, this is just such a common problem. The more people that know about it and how to fix it, maybe... Uh, you can help customers out and make yourself a living at the same time. Sorry, I don't know what the video quality is like, so let's swap um, phones. Um, right, so just quickly, as you with a keen eye might notice, I don't have a G Box, even though. So let's go into this. Hold on, I'm going back to the beginning, I'll show you this. Um, let's roll it exit. So we've got a BMW. We go, you want your connection. I've wired in and a good internet connection as well for this on an MSD80. You don't need it on all of them. Some it will read directly from the ECU, but unless you need it hardwired. Uh, we're going to system selection. Um, yeah, sorry, the G box. So if you go into your engine, this is obviously for Autel users. If you're not an Autel user, sorry about this boring bit. You're going direct because if you go to OBD, it wants it in the car, it wants the key present. You're going to bench mode. Uh, we've got an e-chassis, we know we've got a Siemens MSD80 ECU. There we go. So there you go, it tells you you need the um, uh, G-Box 2. No, you, you don't really, uh, just ignore that. Uh, what I like using, obviously, is my breakout box. Everyone should have one of these, um, a couple of different ones. This is my favourite one, this is from Chip Tuning Shop, so if you want really good quality i've had this couple of years it's brilliant it's never let me down nothing's worn out on it you know but loads of other ones they wear out they break it's the really cheap ones these are good i think they're about 80 or 90 pounds speak to after at chip tuning shop chip tuning shop uh great little device um anyway i'm just using that obviously connected up to my hotel thingy uh, if you want one of these autos, uh, speak to Dave at Mobile Eco Tuning. It's a great deal. I bought this one off him a couple of years ago. I've got loads of stuff from Dave over the years. Um, this does unbeatable prices. Um, I've never needed support for any of the stuff I bought off him, but uh, from what I gather, he does very, very good support. He's also got great uh, videos online of how to do a lot of functionality with different tools that he sells. So check out Mobile Eco Tuning. Uh, check out the website or their YouTube channel. Right, back to this. So, yeah, we've connected it up. You, it's brilliant here, it's got the connections. You pin it out. Now, if you, I don't know how clearly you're gonna see this. So this is telling us that our can low is at the top and our can high is at the bottom. And otherwise, that is correct. The gray is gray on, on this um, breakout box. That is correct, but sometimes it won't work. You just swap them over, it's no drawing. Um, sometimes the can low is where the can high is and the can high is where the can low. You click your okay. So on this one, it gets the ISN online. So we need to get online. Uh, it gives you some instructions there. Uh, stable power supply, 
make sure you have your lead directly connected and your Bluetooth turned off. So it will connect to the internet to obtain the data it needs. And it lost its connection because I turned off my flipping. Instead of turning off my Bluetooth, I turned off my Wi-Fi. Because I'm an idiot. Right, let's turn it all back on. <sighs> yeah, yeah. So the file is downloading. I'll download this file. They do warn you that this is dangerous. You're better off to boot it. Um, not having any issues. So this bit can take a little while. Uh, so I'll come back on once it's done. There you go, it's currently reading the data. Um, I will keep stopping this because it can take a while. <sighs> do -do 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 -do. Okay, I'm going to stop it now. And there you have it, that's the ISN number read out. Um, so now we're going to save it. Here's a picture. Um, just save as today's date. Okay, is it saved? Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Uh, ISN. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to do the screen and look at the phone screen, so it's quite difficult. There we go, we'll save that. Um, then we click OK, it's going to save it anyway as a file. Oh no, it won't. Oh. That's annoying. <laughs> Doesn't matter, I saved the screen, so we've got that, and I've also got it on the video here because we're going to have to type that into the thingy. While I was waiting, I was soldering. Uh, the CAS module uh, connection, I've got one more connection to make and then we shall read that out. Right, the CAS is soldered up. Um, I was going to use a laptop but as soon as the tablet is already on, we we'll use the tablet and the Autel uh, XP or UP400, we're going to call it the same thing. Uh, you might wonder why it's upside down and stuff like that. Um, basically, Autel just don't give you long enough or flexible enough wiring, so once you've soldered it in, you don't absolutely want to move it and spin it around too much, so it's easier to put the programmer upside down than it is to put the wiring the right, right way around. That simple. Right, so now what we want to do is we want to come out of our engine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go into our um, No, we don't want to go into our immobilizer. Let's come out of there. Escape. Well, it's an ECU renew. What ECU do you want to renew? Well, the immobilizer control module, of course. Uh, it's a CAS 3 Plus, this one. Um, an OL15Y chipset. Uh, ECU operations. So, follow them for strict operation. Um, so, we're going to read our EEPROM. Um, hopefully, our connection is good. Don't know, the soldering is a bit tough. I've got very little light here. Um, so, yeah, we'll see in a minute. Usually, 5% is the give up mark. I don't know, it's done it. Um, so, it's going to read that. We're going to save it as. Um, oh, my God, what we're going to save this one as. Um, I don't know the registration of the vehicle. I'll just put it as Mark. Um, A R K. Um, so that was our EEPROM file. Confirm. So it's read successfully. Then we're going to read our flash data. So clearly, my duff in the dark soldering with not flexible or long enough wiring. And I burnt my thumb. At least it's connected and read what we want it to read. Uh, what you should do is read, open the data, view the data, read again, open the data, review the data again to make sure it's consistent to make sure you've had a good read. Um, that's, that is the proper way of doing it. Um, and I prefer doing it on a laptop, you can see it better and stuff like that, but oh, I just want to get it done. It's now. So I've been working late. I started this at what quarter past twenty past ten uh, at home. I need to get my dinner on the cooking, but it's taking a lot longer than it's doing all this filming business. Not that I'm waiting for this, isn't you know? Um, but I've just been doing bits and pieces, just trying to hopefully give you as much information as so you can see what's involved, or if you own these tools or looking at doing this sort of work, you can uh, you know get down with what you need to do. Um, there is 
far better tools for doing it. Um, um, but if you're just doing BMWs, there is some very specific BMW tools for doing it. Do the most of it OBD um, without the need to open the CAS and stuff like that. Um, if I had the car here, I, I don't know. I do. I'm tired now. Um, come on. So that's just read that. Right, I'm going to pause this. It's very boring. I'll come back to you in a second. Right, we have saved our flash. So we're going to ECU renew. Uh, read the EEPROM of the new CAS module. So car is running. If I promise, I'm going to save the initial frequency. Blah, blah, blah. So, see this bit about the original key is expired and you have to learn a new one. That is if you were doing a, is it? sorry it's so dark, isn't it? this is my, my house, it's a cabin in the woods basically. Um, if you're replacing the CAS, because you can use this exact same procedure if you're doing another, putting another CAS into a vehicle, um, then uh, you would need new keys um, or the keys that came with the used cast if you were putting the used cast in. Right, anyway, but in this case we're not so, uh, you don't need to worry about that because we're not going to change anything to do with the keys. Alright, so it was Mark um, and it was the EEPROM, wasn't it? So we need the EEPROM file, which is a four kilobyte file. Are you sure to select that? Yeah, we are. So it's not 315, it'll be 434868. They haven't given me any vehicle details. Um, I'm gonna go for 434, it doesn't really matter. Um, is it an automatic? <sighs> they haven't told me that either. Um, right, so this is what we want now. See, we need the ISN. So if we go to there, go into our Data Manager, slowly open up, go into our saved data that we've just done. Uh, oh no, wrong page. Uh, we saved it as a page, didn't we? So there it is. I've got my notepad open on the laptop, type it into there, and we'll swap it into there in a minute and we'll get some vehicle details as well, I suppose. Okay, as I said, I had very little vehicle information. Uh, the original ECU that normally would have a sticker on it with the chassis number is not on there. So what you can do is the EEPROM file you just read, you can put it on a stick or email it to yourself and open it up in a laptop in a in a hex reader or a, or a uh, file reader. Uh, or, seeing as I still had it, have it already soldered up, I've just gone onto the laptop and reread it. And... Where are we? Sorry, I'm trying to look at the phone screen and the computer screen. If we scroll down, among all the gobbledygook, have I gone past it? No, there we go. Just here, WBAV, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you can see that very well. There we go, we have our chassis number. So I've got my chassis number and I've determined from that um, that it's 2008 320i. So it'll be an 868 megahertz key. So we'll do that, 868. Um, I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff, which is just a matter of filling in information. But what you do, like I've got the picture earlier from our saved info, just write it on notepad so I can have it next to me there. Um, I've got my chassis number there, so I'm going to type all this stuff in and we'll go from there. Right, so I've written the info in. Uh, once you've written it in, go over it and go over it again because you don't want to be whipping this all out and soldering it up again when nothing works. So make sure you've got all the right chassis number, all the right um, ISN number there. And then we're gonna enter that. And click OK. Oh. Um, yeah, EGS number. Right, problem is I have no information on the EGS number or whether this car is even an automatic because I didn't have a car. So we're gonna go zero, 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 zero. <gasps> Zero, 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 zero. We should have eight zeros there. We're gonna click OK. What we're gonna save it as EEPROM Renew. So it's still the same information, Mark, CAS read, blah, 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 EEPROM, but it's got the word Renew on it. We're gonna confirm that. So that's file has saved successfully. Please write the newly saved EEPROM back into the CAS. So go in there, ECU operation, 
Yep. Right the EEPROM. So always back it up, which we did. Click OK. Um, so, ooh, which one is it? Well, it can only be the later of the ones. So click that, it'll kick off the full name. Yeah, renewed EEPROM. OK. It's checking that the program is plugged in. Upgrading the firmware because I've swapped it the, on this hotel program. If you swap from one to another unit, it upgrades and downgrades the firmware to make it suitable for you see with the laptop or with the tablet. So it's got to upgrade it first before it carries on the job. Hakuna Matata is doing its thing. Um, and then all that's left is we remove the soldered wires, put everything away, give it back. To mark tomorrow's plug in. Hopefully, nothing is wrong there. It's quite late, my eyes are a bit blurry. Um, I will um, find out from him whether it works. Um, never had one not work, but copying those 32 digits is a pain in the bum. So, it's written the file successfully. Now, that's that done basically. Um, what you may ask is so. I have put the original car ECU is back in the original car EEPROM, but that has the new um, or replacement ECU will have a different chassis number in it. That doesn't cause a problem for starting. Uh, and the program will be different because from what I read from that, that is from a 1.6i, uh, it's going into a 320i. All that they need to do is coding. Now, if I wanted to change your chassis, chassis number, there is different tools you can do that with. Uh, very straightforward programming. Um, I'm going to go into that, but that's not with this tool. That's with it on the car. Uh, you can do it off the car if you want. Um, but to, all these guys need to do is chuck this all in the car um, and program the ECU to align it with the car, and away it'll go. That simple. That's uh, code to the ECU to align it with the car. Uh, the only thing with the chassis number, if they don't change chassis number, it doesn't cause any problems. It will literally, when you do a scan with a diagnostic tool, it'll give you a choice of shit. It'll say there's two chassis numbers in this vehicle, which one? Just choose the right one for the vehicle and make no odds. Uh, it doesn't bring your lights on, doesn't cause any problems, but I like to change chassis number when I can. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to go take this soldering off and hope that helps somebody out. It was quite a breakdown, I think. I think it was a reasonable video. Um, if you're a customer and you want any ECU key work done, not just BMWs, give us a shout. Uh, any repairs, any diagnostics, any tuning, any immobilizer systems, any complex electronic repairs. Um, we're the mans, man. And if you are in the game, or indeed if you're a mechanic and just trying to up your bits and pieces on this sort of stuff, because I'm sure you see lots of electrical faults. Um, you know, I hope this can help you in some way. Or if you have a garage and you want us to do it, we do do trade. Right, thank you very much, goodbye.